Amen. It's going to be extraordinary in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, can we be on our feet as we take in Christ alone? Yeah. Please, let's open our program to page 21. Page 21. Please take your seats. The flight is about to take off. Fasten your seatbelt. 
give no room to any distractions. Because it is time to listen to the tenth edition of the annual Pastoye Adeboye birthday public lecture. And before I do a very brief introduction of our guest speaker, I need to say that each year the process of selecting who will be the speaker at this lecture takes a very, very careful process. And eventually, the general officer makes a choice. Like I said earlier, for the first time in 10 years, our speaker today is a distinguished woman. A child of God. A pastor in the redeemed Christian Church of God. And I think we should be proud of that. Dr. Obi Ezekwesili, like I said, is a child of God and a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. She is a model to many young and young adults and a pride to many adults. She is the president of Human Capital Africa and Senior Economic Advisor at Africa Economic Development Policy Initiative. Um, before I go on, please, from on page 22 to page 24, you'll find something that we have put together there as our profile. And that's just a bit. And what I'm going to tell you is also a bit of the bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She is the founder and chairperson of the School of Politics, Policy, and Governance, established by the Fix Politics Initiative, which she also co chairs. Dr. Obi is a former vice president of the World Bank, African region. She was a Minister of Education and also a Minister of Mineral Resources in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Please, can we give the Lord a round of applause? <laughs> Our guest speaker of today is a co-convener of Bring Back Our Girls campaign. I'm sure many of us remember that. For that, even another round of applause. Dr. Ezekiel is a senior fellow at Yale Jackson Institute for Global Affairs, United States of America. And she was also a Richard Von Wezeka fellow at the Robert Bosch Academy in Berlin, Germany. Let's, let's, let's praise God for all this. Let's clap our hands. Our distinguished lecturer, is currently the board chair of women political leaders in Brussels. I could go on and on, but like I said, we have more details in the program and because we have to be conscious of time. Today we have a woman who is an institution on her own. Amen. A pride to our generation and a pride to the redeemed Christian Church of God. She's such a pride that her husband is bold enough and confident of her to even accompany her here. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Uh, it's not all women that the husband can uh, accompany, but this man is sure of, her, of his brand. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. <laughs> with glory to the almighty God, and with due respect to our guest speaker today, I'd like to invite Dr. Obi. Catherine, I'm sure many of us, have known, I mean, we never knew she bears Catherine too. Dr. Obi, Catherine, is that quite silly? 
the guest lecturer at the tenth pastor here at the boy and not by the lecture generation It's only you. It's only you, Jesus. It's only you. I depend on you. I depend on you, Jesus. I depend on you. I depend on you. I depend on you, Jesus. I depend on you. My Lord and my God, that's really all I have to say, that you be glorified, that you will help me to speak the word of life, the word of truth. You would help me, Lord, to be your own oracle. Let not my own word be in anything that I say. Let it be all about you in everything that we will do here today. Just be exalted, be glorified. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. So I completely make myself available that your name be forever exalted. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. Hi, hello, everyone such a pleasure to be here and uh, I want to start by saying a big thank you to our daddy that the e. E. Deboye after whom this lecture is uh, inaugurated and uh, our mom mommy Adeboye for being such an incredible mom to every one of us I want to thank the chair of the occasion I want to bless the name of the Lord for all of our uh, very top leadership cadre of uh, the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And uh, I say hello to the discussants, Professor <laughs> Dele Balogu, uh, the special assistant to Daddy Adeboy on administration, and my dear sister, Madam Professor. I should have done the business of taking my... Um, my program with me. I do want to say a big thank you to all our fathers, all our mothers who are here, and also to the, the person whose idea this was, uh, uh, Pastor G. Day. I, we, you know, the Lord bless you mightily for your for 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 the initiative you took to honor Daddy while he is here with us. Thank you so much. While he's here with us, what an incredible honor. I mean, if this was not done, it should have been done. So that's definitely something we should acknowledge God for in the life of our pastor. Um, because, you know, we often assume that people know. Oh, they, they should know. But sometimes people know, but they have no courage to do so we bless God for the courage that spurred you on to do what 
uh, has become a, an annual event, a very prestigious platform. And I want to really thank the organizers, every one of you from Pastor Obasa to Pastor Shola Balogun to Pastor Nathaniel and so many others that uh, you know, put this together and uh, the joy of being able to join uh, today's event as one who would lead the conversation because it's really a conversation. And I've been asked to speak uh, today. And when I got this, I said to my husband, oh dear Lord, you gotta pray for me more. <laughs> you, you have to pray for me more because I need that prayer to cover me. It's okay to laugh now. Eh? I'm not that serious. So I want my husband to, 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 to continue to fire his prayer from where he is from me <laughs> because <laughs> I, I've got to get it right. It takes, it takes collaboration to get it right. Um, so I want to thank um, every one of you, the distinguished audience at today's event. I start by saying that, that the Adeboye is a person, an individual. As a matter of fact, he's become an institution in many ways um, around the matter of academics who buck the trend and understand that even academia is subject to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's one who his distinguished career in the academia stands the test of time and scrutiny. And yet, one who has given an unwavering dedication to the development of God's kingdom as well as the development of our country and continent and the rest of the world. I, I speak from a place of knowledge that I've gathered over several decades of our father-daughter relationship, during which time he would variously act as a, a prophet Elijah, although daddy says he's not a prophet, but you know, he acts as a prophet Elijah, or he acts as a prophet Elisha, or he's a, 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 Nathan, a, well, a Nathan to kings. It's been such a delight to see daddy acting in these different characterizations of what it takes to be a spiritual leader in nation building. And he's always done this according as how the, that the Lord directs him for the season. I was in fact a daily witness to several years of his uh, engagement with my then boss, President Olusegun Obasanjo, how he was selfless. Daddy is not one of those um, people who want to benefit from anything. No, not daddy. A man of honor and integrity. I mean, it's not enough to say you're a Christian um, because be, saying you're a Christian is not enough. Uh, after all, we have Christians who, on the matter of integrity and dignity and values, would say they have outsourced it to the Holy Spirit. It is when the Holy Spirit helps them that they can show integrity. Not Daddy. Daddy is consistently a man of honor and integrity. And I value him so much for that, you know. So, Daddy, in that period that... Um, I was in government when he would visit with President Obasanjo because for President Obasanjo I was also like his daughter and so daddy would in all the ranges of what it takes to speak truth to power that was what our daddy did you should all be proud of him even as I am proud of him Daddy has continued from even then until now uh, to be a, a person uh, who engages himself on the matter of nation building from an entirely spiritual perspective. Not, not politics for daddy. He's not partisan. No matter what anybody may say, I know that of him. He's not partisan. So he's engaged in the matter of nation building from the perspective of his own 
accountability to his almighty God. Our almighty God that he introduces to us as our father. And he does this because he's completely sold out to his time in eternity. Some of his most powerful contributions in framing public discourse on how a country can achieve its manifest destiny have inspired us, his children, far and wide. When daddy speaks the word of scripture, which itself states that it is the spirit of God that gives illumination because the word of God through his uh, uh, messenger can only be discerned by the spirit it immediately decides the audience it was after all Apostle Paul that said I speak not in the enticing words of man's wisdom each one of us who comes to God would already know and receive a tailor-made tailor message on the basis of which they stand in Christ. In my own case, <laughs> I had to uh, be fully persuaded as to why God was God in certain ways. And that persuasion came to this logical mind of mine through the scripture in 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 26-29, uh, where he basically says that uh, it is not uh, it, God. God is not did not come on the basis of the wise, the noble, the ones who are strong. It, God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the things that are that are that are wise, and the base things of this world to confound the things that are strong. And when God says in that scripture further on that the foolishness of God is wiser than man. I immediately knew that it doesn't matter your academic distinction. You have no basis for even having a conversation with God where you are asking him why. I thought a really good Christian in the redeemed Christian church of God will agree with me that we cannot ask God why. And so, for you to see your calling, you, 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 you somehow have to understand that it is about you and the vision and mission of God for your life. I know, I know, at least I know here on earth, that as far as that is concerned, he and his God are working together in the fulfillment of his manifest destiny. Praise the Lord for that. All right, now that I have dispensed my role as uh, daddy's daughter, I, I shall now go into the uh, academic side of the discourse, but of course from a very uh, uh, spiritual angle of my understanding about nation building. So our topic this year says rebuild, renew, restore uh, the need of the Nigerian nation. I, I gladly take on the responsibility of um, helping us explore this theme. I want to uh, state clearly that as I already said uh, about daddy, that, that the prayers that he has prayed concerning Nigeria are never and will never be in vain. It, it's impossible for it to be in vain. Um, so this topic about rebuild, renew, uh, uh, restore uh, the, the need of the Nigerian nation comes at a most auspicious time. And I want to start uh, by saying that a key part of my conversation is really about asking questions. And the reason that I ask questions a lot is because I believe in the, um, in, in the philosophy of um, Einstein about the curious mind, where Einstein says something quite fascinating to me. He said, if I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on the solution, I could spend the first 55 minutes determining the proper question to ask. For once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. You know, I have a number of questions arising from the topic of today's discourse. And I hope that as I ask those questions, it gets us thinking um, and 
being able to clarify where we come out on a number of issues of nation building. What are the basic meanings of rebuild, restore, and renew? What inference can we draw from the topic regarding Nigeria in relation to the necessity for a rebuilding, a restoration, and a renewal agenda? Is Nigeria a country or nation? And does it really matter which one Nigeria is? How is the need of a people determined? Is the need of the Nigerian people to rebuild, restore, and renew their country? If our need is to rebuild, uh, restore, and renew Nigeria, who, who takes responsibility for it at a time like this? Are there biblical and contemporary examples of rebuilding, restoration, and renewal agenda that we can learn from? Well, first, the basic definitions. Whenever you see the prefix re, it simply means back to or again. Fundamentally, therefore, all three key words of our topic this year suggest the building back or building again or returning again to, uh, to what used to be and making new or remaking is our emphasis. When does it mean, what does it mean to rebuild, to restore or renew in relation to Nigeria? Uh, to rebuild is to build something again that has been damaged or destroyed. It implies a return to what used to be before a damage occurred. It means to repair or, or renew a thing to its original state. Hence, to rebuild Nigeria is to return it to a certain satisfactory state that once existed before it fell into disrepair or disarray or disorder. To restore Nigeria, meanwhile, means to try to return it to the good situation in which it was before an unpleasant event happened. To restore is to put or bring back into existence or use. To bring back or to put back into a former state or, or if, uh, an original state. To restore Nigeria is to choose whatever once, uh, once existed but is now gone and to bring it back. And to renew Nigeria is to resume an activity after an interruption or to increase the life or replace something that has gone old. To begin doing something again or with increased strength. To renew Nigeria is to make a thing and give it a fresh impetus or extension of life. So the question is which of these prefixed actions, rebuild, restore, and renew, or all of them together, would strike us as being potently transformative enough to take Nigeria to an expected end? And what really are the end games of the rebuilding, restoring, and renewing actions? Are they ends in themselves? In other words, they, you know, renew, rebuild, re uh, restore, renew, they are all verbs. So they are action words. So are they in of themselves ends? Oh, we're rebuilding, we're, we're restoring, we're renewing. Is that an end? Is it an intermediate goal that has an ultimate end? Can the people of Nigeria achieve a consensus state of affairs by which the country functions well for everyone through these triple R's agenda? As one who believes that Nigeria has consistently and considerably batted below its possibilities, I humbly request for the understanding and the indulgence of the framers of this topic to immediately posit that any action which returns our Nigeria to a previous state in its checkered history underserves the need of the people of Nigeria in our 21st century world. 
I believe that a rebuilding, a restoration, and renewal agenda will be rather underwhelming for a country in the current state that we have seen its history over these decades. This country has passed the Rubicon of destabilization and is now closer in interpretation amongst nations to a failed country than a fragile country. So to rebuild, to restore, to renew would be totally underwhelming of what needs to happen concerning the state of the Nigerian uh, country. In situating the performance of Nigeria very early on and clearly, I often like to do comparisons because in the world of development, it's, it's often important that countries don't just rest on their laurels and say, we are doing well, thank you. You have to say in relation to what and in relation to who. And so, in the case of Nigeria, I would normally uh, do comparisons of Nigeria with the performance of countries like Singapore or South Korea. And then, often to African audiences and to African presidents, they would say something of the kind that, oh, but Singapore is a very small country. And then I say to them, so why isn't Guinea-Bissau doing as well as Singapore? Why isn't Bene Republic? doing as well as Singapore since the issue is the size because after all the issue is not the size the same principles of governance of nations can deliver similar outcomes subject to of course the nuances that show their uniqueness ladies and gentlemen my dear fathers my mothers and the organizers of this um, very important lecture series. I decided, okay, I will start comparing Nigeria with Indonesia because Indonesia and Nigeria share a lot in common. Historically, both colonized by Britain. Politically, both checkered history of a mix of democracy and military governance. Economically, both countries endowed with mineral resources. Religiously, both diverse countries with Muslim, significant Muslim population and so many other features. So, I want to take a walk with you into what, Singapore, what Indonesia and Nigeria looks like in terms of telling you what living in Nigeria or living in, or in Indonesia, you can see Singapore is my favorite country. I keep, I keep trying to mention it. So I take a walk with you now. And I tell you, the population of Indonesia is 275 million. And Nigeria's population is 280 million. And I say to you that you will have to make 57% less money in Nigeria if you should relocate to Nigeria from Indonesia. The reason is that Indonesia's in GDP per capita is $5,509, while that of Nigeria is $2,207 as of 2020. I say to you that you will have to uh, be four point three times more likely to live in poverty should you move from Indonesia to Nigeria. <laughs> the reason is that poverty level in Indonesia is 9.4%. In Nigeria, however, it is 40.1% as of 2000. Why are you laughing? You don't want to relocate to Nigeria. <laughs> You can understand what I'm doing, right? Come on, audience. You can understand what I'm doing. I'm trying to bring us into a place of common understanding because it's always important. So, for in, uh, what, you know, in Indonesia, um, 
you know, if you decided to move from Indonesia to come live in Nigeria, well, you, sh you would be ready for a life expectancy to reduce by 17 years. That's because Indonesia's uh, life expectancy is 73 years, whereas that of Nigeria is 52 years. Thank God for all of our fathers and mothers, especially Pastor Jide who came up here looking like he was in his 70s and we're told he's in his, his 86. Wow, praise the Lord. Imagine life expectancy. That's the average age at which majority of our country people die. That's what life expectancy measures. And then if a person is a woman, in Indonesia, what happens is 177 women per every 100,000 births die during childbearing. In the case of Nigeria, it is 917. In the case of Indonesia, a child will be 35.4% less likely to be illiterate. You know, uh, uh, to be literate, rather. You see, because in Nigeria, our literacy level is at 62%, while death is at 96%. A, a child will be 2.9 times more likely to die during infancy in, 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 in Indonesia. It, sorry, in Nigeria. But, but in Indonesia, the, the, the child would, you know, be having only a possibility that 19.7% of, of every 1,000 birth will, will die. But in the case of Nigeria, it is a larger number of children that die by that infancy. In Nigeria, uh, it, it is 56.7 children that die out of every, uh, 56.7 die out of every 1,000 births. In Indonesia, you will be 37.4% less likely to have electricity than in Nigeria. Why? Because in Indonesia, approximately 99% of the people have electricity. 100% in urban areas and 99% in rural areas. In, in the case of Nigeria, 62% of the people on average have electricity. 91% in rural, in urban areas. Am I correct? <laughs> I know people always have something to say about the uh, power sector. <laughs> and, and, and in rural area uh, in Nigeria, just about 30%. Mark you. In their rural area, 99%. It matters considerably for economic performance of countries. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you will be 3.1 and, and uh, 3 times uh, more likely to live before the poverty line in Nigeria compared to what happens in Indonesia. It is just 9.4%. I think I already said that. So in Nigeria, you know, you see that life is considerably harder compared to what the Indonesian person is, is, uh, is, is faced with. To that extent, therefore, when our topics say what Nigeria needs is to rebuild, to restore, and to renew. You can now understand why it would be inadequate. Nigeria needs to do much more than that. The circumstances of Nigeria would require that we don't in any way imagine that a country that has this kind of stuck 
data side by side all the possibilities that it has to be a great nation is doing well. It is just that we missed a few steps somewhere and we just need to go and correct those few steps. It is not so. The God that we serve does not accept mediocrity. Am I correct? Our daddy does not accept mediocrity either. Because I know that as our coach, he's constantly pushing us to do much more. We must scrutinize our present quest lest we allow ourselves the luxury of a rose-tinted retrospective of history that can harm and hurt our chances of redeeming the time that we have wasted in mediocrity over these de decades of our, of, our, of our independence. It is only by confronting uncomfortable truths that we can do all that is necessary to achieve more, to be more, and to do that faster. Ladies and gentlemen, I make the strong case for values, for taking responsibility, for effective leadership recruitment, for the, for the purpose of the right quality of public decisions, for structural accuracy that delivers governance effectively, and finally for constitutional standards. On the basis of all these factors, I, the firm, I take the firm position that what Nigeria needs is to build. We haven't even done anything that we want to begin to rebuild. We haven't done anything that we need to begin to restore. We haven't done anything that we need to renew. We have been laggards compared to the rest of the contemporary nations. I haven't come to make you feel bad. I believe that anyone who sent me an invitation is prepared for the candle with which I normally speak. Because we haven't done well. God is looking on us and wondering, why have you amounted to so little compared to all the possibilities I've given you? And I know that in a recent statement that daddy was making, it was precisely that. That look at all the possibilities our country has. And yet, it hasn't amounted to what we look forward to. So I then say that we must prepare first to imagine, second to design, third to mobilize, and fourth to build a Nigeria and fifth, to continually monitor the nation that we are building so that it reaches the ultimate goal. And that ultimate goal is to become a globally productive, competitive, prosperous, resilient, equitable, just, fair, inclusive, and sustainable country in which everyone thrives. My key takeaway message is a call for citizens who understand the importance of taking responsibility to begin to do so now. I am of the view that a poorly governed people at risk of disintegration must intelligently collaborate to design a bold citizens emergency rescue plan for their country. Note that I said country, I did not say nation, as used by the organizers. And there's a reason for that. There is a long walk between being a country and becoming a nation. A lot of people use those terms interchangeably. No, they are not the same thing. What has happened to us is that the moment that the British brought different groups of people together within a certain territory and designated us as colonial masters as a country and then we became independent all we became was an independent country we did not become a nation there was a necessity for us to transform from that 
expression of territorial integrity as a people into a nation of people with shared vision, with shared ethos, with shared principles, with shared beliefs, with common identity that is negotiated, with a sense of aspiration that is agreed as being our vision for the present and the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I then say in my conclusions that we have two blocks of issues that are important for us. <laughs> my husband is signaling me on my time, so clap for my husband now. He says I still have time, so I should carry on. <laughs> Uh, now you now you know why I, I try to do something it's okay because I have a, an incredible husband, you know. So so yes, please clap for my husband. Thank you. <laughs> so in my conclusions, I then I then talk about you know this this gap between country and nation as a major gap that circumscribed us into a people that have not been able to define common aspirations, to agree a unified vision a, behind which we all rally, a people without shared values, a people who are struggling to actually be a people. And I say that any such plan to rescue us so that we can get back into the original kind of foundation that God wanted us to have for ourselves would include working on the matter of the people. On the people, we need a set of shared values. We need a rallying vision. We need a great common identity which everyone will respect, everyone would value, and everyone would defend. And I said we need a public leadership recruitment system for high quality leadership decisions. And then the second building blocks, I say these are the structures. And here I say that we need a deep restructuring arrangement to agree and design the most appropriate model of a federal system that matches structure with function for the most effective delivery of mandates. A fundamental devolution of power to states as the key federating units, thereby reducing the list of items in the exclusive list as mandates for the federal government. I say here that we need institutions building agenda, a robust institutions building agenda. And then finally here I say we do need a new constitution adopted through a yes or no referendum on all the provisions because that brings the people of Nigeria onto a common template. I even then go further and say we need a transparent and credible electoral system that deepens our democracy, efficiently conducting election so that it regulates and penalizes poor public leadership that is delivered by politicians today without any consequence. Poor public leadership. How dare you deliver poor public leadership and the citizens then vote you back again into office. It is not of God. That is not of God. So um, these are the building blocks that I said we will need. I say many things in my, in my paper which I hope will be distributed. But let me end on this. Um, let me quote uh, Prime Minister Tafawa Balewa in the year that Nigeria gained its independence. Today is Independence Day. The 1st of October 1960 is a date to which for two years Nigeria has been eagerly looking forward. At last, our great day has arrived and Nigeria is now indeed an independent sovereign nation. Words cannot adequately 
express my joy and pride at being the Nigerian citizen privileged to accept from Her Royal Highness these constitutional instruments which are the symbols of Nigeria's independence. It is a unique privilege which I shall remember forever and it gives me strength and courage as I dedicate my life to the service of our country. This is a wonderful day and it is all the more wonderful because we have waited, uh, awaited it with increasing impatience. Uh, compelled to watch one country after another, overtaking us on the road when we had so nearly reached our goal. But now we have acquired our rightful status. And I feel sure that history will show that the building of our nation proceeded at the wisest pace. Huh. It has been thorough and Nigeria now stands well built upon firm foundations. Well, 63 years after, how does that speech sound? Because 63 years after, here we are as a country, more divided than we have ever been. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say that there are important nation formation issues that must be addressed by our country. And addressing it will depend on our understanding when that is said that people have done that which is humanly possible to them, we now have to depend on God. Well, I can tell you that God sent me to the valley of the dry bones and said that's exactly what your father was talking about. The dry bones were so dry that even the prophet said to God when he asked him, do you think that these bones can live? He said, thou knowest. Thank you very much. Another round of applause, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. As she was rounding up, I began to ask myself, which way should I describe this woman? There was a woman in Britain, and in her time, we had the world. They called her Iron Lady. Now, I was, I was just thinking, because the bullets were just coming out. And I was wondering what word, I don't know who can lend me a word, but honestly, this has been a fantastic presentation. Very outstanding, very bold, very powerful. Very, very incisive. Let's clap our hands for the Lord Jesus. The elders have a say. They say, if your daughter is good, say it. For us in the redeemed Christian church, we are blessed. And we are proud of you, man. Let's clap our hands for the Lord Jesus. Uh, Pastor Chinedu, let's give a round of applause to this man. The powerhouse. The signal officer. <laughs> let's celebrate Jesus. <laughs> I'm sure we have been blessed. Now, she will still be around briefly in case you have a question or a comment to make on our presentation. 
But before then, I'd like to acknowledge the presence in the house of another young man, the national overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, young man, Pastor Sandy Edward Akande. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are honored by your presence, sir. Now, shortly, we'll ask him to please step forward and say one or two things. But before then, I'd like to introduce one more time the distinguished discussants that we have for today. Professor Dele Balogun, the Special Assistant to the General Overseer in Charge of Administration, and Professor Mrs. Adebola Adebileje from the Redeemers University. Please, a round of applause for them. And so that we can take benefit of the very powerful presentation and flow in the spirit in which it was delivered, I'd like to humbly invite our beloved Professor Mrs. Adebola Debileje to say a few things and make our input into this discussion. Please join me as I welcome Professor Mrs. Adebileje for a very short discussion on this topic. Please let's clap our hands. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I want to appreciate my daddies and mommies in the house. And um, I want to appreciate my being here. I want to thank the organizers for the privilege given me to be here. I want to say I'm extremely blessed for the lecture that has been delivered by the one and only Dr. Obi Ezekielisi. May God continue to bless you. And may God continue to use you for the development of our nation. In Jesus' name. Brethren, when I saw the topic for today, I made up my mind, I prepared my mind that I will come here to listen to steps to be taken for rebuilding, renewing, and restoring our dear country, Nigeria. But alas, by the time our dear sister completed her lecture, I felt more in the wood than ever before. That means we are in a very, 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 very bad problem. If you don't know that, know that today. But my consolation lies in the fact that when she started, she made a very, very significant reference to our da dear daddy in the Lord, Daddy E.A. Adeboye, on whose account we are here today. For a man to be consistently sold to the things of God and as much as people are trying, no one has ever found any common fault in him. That that means as his children in the redeemed Christian Church of God, there is still hope for Nigeria. No matter how scattered situations may seem, no matter how you know, elusive hope may be, 
there is still hope. And I want to thank God for that. May God bless you, man. You have said the truth. And what you said was the naked truth. If we came here just to listen to the lecture and go home the same way, then we are, we are not ready. We are not ready. When I was coming, I, I put on my radio, and all through from Mede till we, we got to camp, all the discuss, uh, I mean, discussions on radio was about the current situation in Nigeria. But I've come to discover that all the things our lecturer said here, none of us is yet ready to take that part. All we are best at doing in Nigeria is to condemn, criticize, and get angry. At who? At who do we get angry? That will not solve our problems. So what I am taking home and what I feel we should also be taking home is that we need to sit, observe our environment, our situation, and then learn how to ask questions. If we do not ask questions, we will not move forward. If she did not ask questions, she wouldn't have been able to give us the stark differences between Indonesia and Nigeria. And it is very sad that a nation blessed with so much, with so much resources, with so much wise people, with so much uh, expectations, we are at this level. Brethren, if it is prayers we, 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 we know how to, to, to do, we should sincerely start praying. Imagine what, what is happening today and before Monday, things would have got worse. So what will happen to our children? We need a supernatural force to arrest our situation. But why God is ready to do his part, what are we doing as Nigerians? What, what are we doing? How, how can we, how can we put in our own little quota to solve. He, she said it is underwhelming to even be saying we want to rebuild, we want to uh, renew, we want to restore. So there is a foundational issue. We have, we have lost our values, we have lost our standards, we have, see, when we are talking about Daddy Gio, don't let us forget that Daddy Gio is also a human being. How come he is able to do what he is doing? And many find it difficult. So what I want to say, in addition to our problems, is that we must start from our individual individual lives.
Tommy, you are welcome. Praise the Lord. Let's shout it better. Praise the Lord. Amen. The entrance of our dear mommy is significant. God is on our side. So what I... Thank you very much. My own addition to the remarkable lecture of today is that we must decisively determine individually what we can do to salvage this nation and then begin to do it. You know, something struck me when she said, we are not yet a nation. Ah, we are not yet a nation. And the fact that people die in thousands daily without any, you know, any repercussion, any consequences. Human beings slaughtering other human beings. Ah, it confirms that we are not yet a nation. It is when we begin to appreciate one another, when we begin to see that human life is significant, when we begin to respect what one another stands for, then we may start at becoming a nation. Brethren, it starts from us. It begins from our homes. How do we, how do we teach our children? Do you understand the fact that there is no standard among our children anymore? They don't fear God anymore. They live dual lives. They live differently from what, how they live at home and they live differently in school. Do you know that we are at a crossroad? Seriously? I would not want us to take this lecture as just, you know, the um, MC was emphasizing the fact that this is the very first time a woman will be coming. And I was privileged to, you know, to review some of the past lectures into a compendium. So that took me, that, that gave me the opportunity to read through at least four in order for me to bring them together. So I, I can say I understand what each of them stands for. But today's lecture opens my eyes to the fact that as parents, as pastors, as youth leaders, we are not doing enough. We are not doing enough. We need to go back and begin to rebuild the foundation. If that term, rebuild, must mean anything to us. I pray that the almighty God, who will never forsake us, will help us through in the name of Jesus. We need to start taking responsibility. She kept on saying that. We need to, you know, if you know that you are responsible for your actions, you will think twice before you take any action. These days, in our country, Nigeria, anybody does anything because he or she knows that no one, no one, we call him or her to order. If nobody will call you to order, have you forgotten God will one day call you to order? Even if you do not regard anybody, why can't we regard God? And our children must be taught that there is a God somewhere who we are going to report to. Nigeria will be better again. Nigeria will be great again. In the mighty name of Jesus. So we need to become active 
in order to, you know, close that gap between being a country and being, being a nation. You nobody will do it for us. If you, if you sit down and read through the history of Singapore, you will see how much sacrifice went into building that nation. So we must learn how to make sacrifices. If we cannot do that, then we are going nowhere. And it starts from us. It starts from our homes. I keep repeating home because I know what I'm talking about. So a public leadership recruitment system, institutional building agenda, a transparent electoral system, poor public leadership. Do you know that we are the, we are the cause of our own problems? Because she said, if somebody became a leader and he did woefully and we still returned him, then whose fault is it? Why are we crying foul now? We have that power to be truthful in everything we do, especially in public leadership. It belongs to every one of us. Public leadership, it belongs to every one of us. It is a decision that we culminate in the kind of leaders we have. Unfortunately, we don't want the truth. Nobody, we don't want to listen to the truth. Thank God for doctor for that stark naked truth. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So my take home personally is that I, I will re-engineer. I'm a Nigerian. It's the truth. There is no way I'm running to. Even if I take up a citizenship in another nation, it can never be the same. And Nigeria will not be destroyed in my generation. I don't know about you, but I've made up my mind after this lecture, Nigeria will not be destroyed in my generation. We will continue to pray, and God, in his mercy, will help us through. Thank you, ma. God bless you. Hallelujah. While the discussant was on, we had our mommy enter. She came in just gently. And we want to say, Mommy, you are welcome. Can we just give the Lord a round of applause to welcome Mommy? Mommy, you are welcome. Now. Mommy. Don't worry, we will, mommy will be coming to speak with us shortly. Well, in the meantime, I'd like to invite the second discussant, our beloved Professor Dele Balogun. But before he takes the microphone, let me acknowledge the presence with us here today of Dr. Mrs. Stella Okoli the Managing Director, CEO of EMSO Pharmaceuticals. You are welcome, ma'am. Please, let's clap our hands for our discussant, Professor Dele Balogun. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. Please, my God. Let someone shout hallelujah. If you have the hope that Nigeria will still be better, go ahead and shout hallelujah. I like to stand on the established protocol. I want to sincerely appreciate the convener, the chairman of this occasion, and the planning committee of Pastor E. A. Adeboye annual public lecture. These people have organized these lectures for the past 10 years to honor our esteemed father in the Lord. I sincerely appreciate you. 
I also want to use this occasion to appreciate our parents in the Lord. I mean Daddy and Mommy Jill. If you are clapping, please do it well. Our esteemed father and mother in the Lord. You will agree with me that our parents are sold out for the services of humanity and they are doing everything possible to ensure that this world is much more better. It is my prayer that during the lifetime of the Dijio, Nigeria of his dream will come to reality. I can't hear your amen. Let me also appreciate our guest lecturer who has done justice to today's topic. Without any doubt, she has delivered an insightful lecture, a mind-boggling lecture, an enlightened lecture that has provoked all of us to thought. Let us appreciate her. You will agree with me that the guest lecturer of today has done justice to the topic Rebuild, Restore, and Renew the Need for Nigerian Nation. She started by employing what I call Socratic method. Socrates was a nation philosopher who believes that when you are discussing something important, you have to start by raising questions. Our guest lecturer raised a lot of questions like what do we mean by restore, renew, and rebuild? She went further to ask some questions. What is exactly is the need of Nigeria? How do we determine the need of Nigeria? If we are able to uh, determine the need of Nigeria, uh, what are we going to do to ensure that we bring solution to all this need? Without any doubt, our, nation, our country, Nigeria, has been compromised and damaged but I believe that not beyond the repairs. There is a school of thought who would tell you that Nigeria has been compromised, damaged beyond the repairs, and there is nothing anyone can do. I still believe that uh, things will get better for Nigeria. If you also believe that with me, I want to hear your loud amen. In fact, some people have even describe Nigeria as a failed state because of what is going. Some people are saying everything in Nigeria has gone comatose and so on and so forth. People are shouting there is hunger in the line in the land that even our Naira is crashing and collapsing every day. The guest lecturer told us clearly that when you look at all these key concepts Rebuild, restore, renew. What is common to all this concept is the word re. And in a layman's language, re simply means to return. When we are saying rebuild, we want to rebuild. We want to return to the kind of building that has been damaged. We want to do repairs. And when we say restore, we are trying to say we want to return to the good old days. And when we say renew, we are talking about impetus of life. She went further to compare Nigeria with Indonesia. And in a comparative analysis, she made us realize that there is no way you can compare Nigeria with Indonesia. Life in, 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 in Indonesia is much more better than life in Nigeria. The level of poverty in Nigeria is higher than that of Indonesia. Infancy mortality rate is higher in Nigeria than that of 
Indonesia and she was asking the question, if would you like to relocate to Nigeria and to, uh, to enjoy some of these things? But the truth is that we are already here. Some of us can no longer relocate. There is no way we can jackpa. All we are going to do is to ensure that we remain and put us together to, to rebuild Nigeria. Having said that, she mentioned some key points which I want to draw your attention to. She said one of the problems of Nigeria is the fact that Nigeria is full of mediocrity. There is no room for excellence, people of God. If actually we want to solve the problem of Nigeria, it is high time we drove mediocrity away from our nation. There is, the problem we are facing today is as a result of mediocrity at all levels. I believe that by inviting, imbibing the spirit of excellence, mediocrity will be forgotten in our nation, Nigeria. She told us that it is better that we describe Nigeria as being fragile rather than saying that Nigeria is a first state. And I believe that Nigeria has not failed. It will not fail, even though it is fragile. But with the support of the law, the fragility of this nation will be surrendered. The first prime minister of Singapore, you know, she will also mention Singapore in her discussion by the name Lee Kuan Yew, wrote a book from the third world to the first world. And in that book, he was trying to tell us that at, by 1969, Nigeria and Singapore, they were at par. But today, Singapore has, written, has risen to become the first world why Nigeria is still wallowing in abject for poverty and in a lot of problems. And in that book, there is a portion that he mentioned something touching. He said, he knew, that man wrote and said, he knew that among the committee of nations that Nigeria would never make it. And he gave his reason. He said, in those days, when he as the prime minister would be entering or boarding the public plane to attend president meeting, that Nigeria Nigerian president or Nigerian officer who shot a plane that Nigeria is a country of wastages. I pray that the grace to eliminate wastages in our country, the Lord will give us in Jesus' name. Our guest lecturer told us that if you actually want to solve the problem of Nigeria, we have to do something about our value. We have to redefine our value. We must ensure that our value is godly value. Unless we return to godly value, there is no way Nigeria can move forward. She also mentioned that if we are serious about solving the problem of Nigeria, we must be ready to get what she calls constitutional standard. We must have public, we must have public leadership standard and we must put right policy in place and towards the end she said what we need to do is to imagine without is to say we have to start with our thinking system and that is why I want to beckon on everyone here today let's be begin to think right about Nigeria it will still be well think well about this nation he said we should start with right imagination after right imagination we must design after the design we must put right government in place uh, after putting it in place we have to mo monitor and ensure that it works. The guest lecturer ended by saying the summary for this concept rebuild, renew and restore to my own mind is what she called restructuring restructuring 
that the geo that we are celebrating today, our esteemed father in the Lord, is an apostle of restructuring. He has said it several times. If Nigeria is to make it, if Nigeria is to stand tall among the committee of nations, we have to take the issue of restructuring very well. My own input is to tell you that we can resummarize the theory concept as restructuring. There is need for us to restructure. Let me end by saying, I want to end with a platonic dictum. Until Nigeria is handed over into the hands of God and we return to the existing structure as formulated by McPherson Constitution of 1951, remodified by Littleton Constitution of 1954 that is based on federation through federalism where each federation will develop their own constituency, their own territory. I submit there can be no end to the problem of Nigeria. The key word is restructuring. Let us go back to true federalism and hand everything over to God. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Professor Dele Balogun. Hallelujah. We've come to the point where a few of us who have questions or comments to make will be allowed. But because of our time, we will only take three. Whether as questions or as comments, three. Any other comment or questions you have, we will compile all these and uh, you will surely have the answers. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Well, I can see my intercontinental prayer coordinator raising up his hand. Please, sir, if you don't mind, please stand. Who else? I'm taking just three. Okay, Pastor. Yeah, please just come out. Just come out. Three, the first three out. And please don't turn it to lecture. Question or comment all within two minutes. Thank you. We're already four. All right, please. Give the mic to Pastor Lawale. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much. It was a uh, speaker today, two questions, man. During our university days, a lecturer came out and he threw a question to us. The problem in Nigeria, the cause, and how to cope it. We all contributed academically. We thought we had done justice to all. But it came out. You say you are all, you've not gotten it. Then he said, just what you are said today, there is no Nigeria. What we have is a, in different tribes. Then he confirmed, he said, I'm a Hebo man. And it says an evil. If I say right now, all Nigerians are foolish. He said, We will all laugh. We are not foolish. Too. But let me say here, he said, All Hebrews are foolish, or all Yorubas are foolish, or all Lawis are foolish. He said, I will not, my neck will not follow me who. He said, I will tell you, there's no Nigeria. Now, as we are living here today, how can we actually remove 
neutralize or approve tribalism. Because that is the canker worm that is hitting us. That is now question number one. Number, the second question is based on the fact of that lecturer. See, we are talking right now. The canker worm is still based on individualism, as it were. Immediately I heard that statement. I used to carry tribalism on my head, but I hated it. But the Lord, the one who uprooted it from my heart. Now, if we in the church today, in the church today, we see all kinds of segregation here and there. Because if we do not settle this matter, Nigeria cannot move forward. And Nigeria today, by the personal grace of God, as we have heard, we are going to have a way forward. So what is the way forward concerning this Kankawa? Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma, for a good lecture. While you are delivering your lecture, you may mention that uh, even when we have a bad governor, people elected that we keep on returning them. But many a time, people went back to, the, to vote with the consciousness that they are bringing good people to lead them. But at times, there's this quote and unquote, does our, quote, uh, does our uh, vote count? Because we need to look at that also, not at every time, at all time that uh, people are selling their vote. We have people that have conscience to bring in good leader. But the question remains, does our vote count, is it counted? So there is need for us to look at our electoral system. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, the third person. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, we always compare Nigeria to Singapore, Indonesia, and so forth. Why not West African countries? There are some West African countries that are better than Nigeria. Basic things there. Light. Prices of materials. They don't change for five years. There in Senegal, the president wanted to change the date of the election. The rules of the same no. The parliamentarian, they said no, we are not changing it. And they brought, they brought it back. So, not only the white nations, even these West Africans. Then, some years ago, you are also a politician. You know what it means to be a politician in Nigeria. You know what they did to you. Now, those who are there now, some of them are not good. We know, no matter what you do, they, just, they are just destroying the country. When are we going to have the right people? The Christians, those who are honest, those who are ready to serve the nations, when are we going to have them? When are the Christians going to rise up and support those who are ready? When are we going to have Christians standing up, pastors, you know, people who are born again, who are ready to serve the nation? Are we ready to support them? Are we ready to, I mean, to, to vote for them? Are we ready to sponsor them? Some of us who are Christians don't have enough money than, the, than these people. Are we ready to push somebody forward Thank and you. then use money to, to push you. them in? Because we have to do something. Thank you, sir. That will help us. Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. And please, Dr. Obi, before you respond, there's a question here. Please, as former Minister of Education, how can we, what is your advice for us on the education, on moving the education sector forward? Thank you, ma'am. Can we just pay attention to, please, you can respond from there if you so decide, can I, can I or you prefer. All right, let's clap our hands for Jesus as she steps forward.
I should, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much. First, I really want to acknowledge the discussants. My goodness, especially Professor. Oh, my goodness, Professor <laughs> Dele. <laughs> you were just... It was almost like you read my entire notes. <laughs> <laughs> that was really fantastic. You know, every point I made, he repeated. <laughs> my goodness. It was so fascinating. And my dear sister, thank you so much. You raised very important and critical questions on the presentation. Um, and to those who have asked me the questions, um, Pastor Olawale, you know, said, the teacher said, there's, there's no Nigeria. There, there are ethnic nationalities. And, and I think that, you know, this is really, it goes to the heart of the conversation. So countries have usually been created in different ways. You know, you conquer a kingdom and you co-opt them and then they become part of you. Or a colonizing um, group uh, colonizes its, its territory and then names it an outpost of, of themselves. In our own case, and much of Africa, I'm sure many people who read basic history would know that there was the disembarment, uh, the, 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 the disembarment of, uh, of Africa where basically they had uh, the conversation in Berlin, uh, they, 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 they divided up Africa. And in dividing up Africa, different communities were joined up and called countries. That is why, for example, uh, you see a Rwanda where the Hutus and the Tutsis, different people in many ways, were brought together in what they considered a forceful co-option to make a country. And so these ethnic groups were not seeing themselves as a country. And it ended up in what we saw as the massive genocide that happened, the worst genocide since the, uh, the, Israeli, uh, the, the Jews were killed in, uh, in, in, um, uh, in uh, Germany. Why did I go through this historical thing? It is because it is all so relevant to what we have. The reason that people tend toward their ethnic uh, cleavage is because they have not been given any reason to, to see themselves as belonging to a higher order union. And so in my lecture, and I think the paper will be made available, I did make a point there that a key missed opportunity for our country is that when the founding fathers had been able to send the British away and gained independence, for Prime Minister Tafawa Balewa to say that we're now a nation showed a lack of full appreciation that we hadn't become a nation because Britain granted us independence. The founding fathers and the mothers that I hardly mentioned in that fight for independence should have then carried the entire country on a walk from country to nation. There's a work involved in the journey from country to nation. We haven't still done that work. The only place that you begin to see a possibility of that work from country to nation is in, the, in a church like the Redeemed Christian Church of God, right? Because that is what it is supposed to be. But like Pastor Olawali said, there are even people in the church who still are caught in the trap of their ethnic ethnocentrism, as we call it. And that the saddest thing of it manifesting in the church is that, in fact, we should know better. In our own case, it shouldn't be moving from an artificial construct of a territory that became an independent country, but it is the fact that we know that there is only one blood by which we are the same, the blood of Jesus. So, my husband normally says that you would not find a Yoruba person in heaven. You would not find an Igbo person in heaven. You would not find an Hausa person in heaven. Who would you find in heaven? The one who can, yeah. 
So why are we then not being the nucleus for the transformation of Nigeria from country to nation? Because the country to nation formation happens by virtue of the inspiration that the leaders mobilize for the people and they give them something to look forward to. They say to them that we are better, we are greater by virtue of our unity in diversity. That was exactly what Lee Kua Yu did. He was talking about Lee Kua Yu. Lee Kua Yu, people think that because Singapore is a small country, it is not as complex as Nigeria. Not so. Apparently, in Singapore, you have multi-ethnic groups. You have the native Malay, you have the Indian, you have the uh, Chinese, you have the, you know, there are so many ethnic groups in, in Singapore. In fact, there was my colleague at the World Bank, the father was the president when Lee Kuan Yew was the, uh, the prime minister. And he would tell us stories of how they built this thing of a system that went from an artificial construct, because they were also colonized as part of Malaysia by Britain. But he built together with the different ethnic groups and the leaders, melted them into a nation of people with a common destiny. We lacked that and we're still struggling with it. So who will do it is the question. It should be with us. It should be us. Are we not the salt and the light of the world? It should be us. The, anytime I see a, 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 a Christian who tends toward tribalism, I, my heart breaks because I'm thinking, how? How can you possibly be an ethnocentric person with the blood of Jesus in you? So this nation is indeed waiting for all of us Especially as children, look, I am, I am from Anambra State. Mommy and Daddy are from Osho State. But I'm their daughter. I don't see them in any light other than my parents. Why should you, why should it not come naturally to you? Do you know why? Because the values that lead to people becoming one you're still operating outside of it. When we operate outside of values, we have a tendency to create our own standards. May God help us, because if we, as the nucleus of Nigeria, should start it, the rest of Nigeria will become it. And then the um, second questionnaire said, how do we, re how, why that we, you, I said we, you keep returning bad leaders uh, into public leadership. Does our vote count? <laughs> well, you know, I referred to it. I said that part of the building blocks for you building, not renewing. Because if you renew INEC, what are you going to renew it from? If you renew Nigerian Judy, you have to build Renewing is too marginal now. Restoring is too marginal now. It is too little, too late. So there has to be a comprehensive approach that says that institutions arise from the basis of what a people place their values on. What do you value? You know, the simple definition of institution in our development world is the way a people do their things. So when you see our judiciary not doing what it should do, you see our police, you see our NINEC, or you see any of our institutions misbehaving, it is an indication of how we as a people do our thing. And that's terrible, that's tragic. So we must change the way we do our thing. I frankly think that at the end of the day, this thing comes back to us as Christians. You know, the truth is, if Jesus Christ would tell us that uh, in that Matthew 5, 13 and 14, and he says to us that you are the salt of the world, you are the, you know, and then, you, you know, if a salt loses its savour, it's of no use. Ah, it's like, you know, sometimes we must put our hands on our heads and cry. Because how can we be in places of authority in the land 
For me, when I was in government, and I said this not as a boast, one of the bases upon which I could stand resilient in my values in government was that before I went into government, my family, we prayed and we knew that it was going to be costly for me to go into government. Because I was going to go from, um, I, I had to take a 90% cut in my salary from Harvard University to working for the government of Nigeria. And you know what kind of adjustment that would mean? And one thing was clear, we were not going to depend on anybody. Because I believe in the story of Abraham when he said to that king that said, let us share the booty from the war. He said, me, share booty from the war with you so that when Abraham becomes rich, it will not be said that if it had not been for you, I would not have become rich. He said, God forbid, I do not take it. So that principle helped us. But even more is the principle where I said, who in the Bible is the hero or heroine on whose values I can also stand? And the Lord pointed me to Nehemiah. He said that of all the governors of uh, uh, Jerusalem, he was the only governor who did not eat from the public treasury. So as Christians, it is not enough for us to just say, I'm a Christian. You can say, I'm a Christian. And we're going to office to they will kill you there. Before you know it, you will be at the center of dividing corrupted meat. Or you would say, I don't eat it, but let me help you to divide it up. <laughs> so we must build Christians who understand this concept of collaboration with God. God will do his own but God looks on us to have values that we're not prepared to negotiate. Praise the Lord. And then, and so when we uh, uh, talk about the electoral system, I think that there was a lot of agitation for improvement in it. And that led to including uh, technology in it. And I really want to give a shout out to all of you young ones that are in this hall today. Because, like, I, I absolutely love your generation. Because this is the generation that will break loose from all the things that have held the previous generation down. You're going to do great. So, I what I would say to you is that it's an unfinished business to reform the electoral system, the political system. You must continue with the strong advocacy. Your voice is absolutely important. Thank God you have parents who, look, I mean, I can imagine how many times some people would have gone to daddy and mommy and said, is she not your daughter? Tell her to stop talking. They just say, yeah, I'm, I'm probably, they'll probably say to the, to the person, eh, you better leave her be alone. Be, why? Because they know that we come to the kingdom at a time like this with the things that we should be in society. So I am very, 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 very grateful for you young ones because part of Africa's greatest problem was the fact that we allowed impunity. We allowed impunity. People would behave badly and we would say, ah, you behave badly, or you take this money and behave worse. Comparing Nigeria to West African countries, yes, you do have a very valid point. Um, the, the, you know, even the example you cited on Senegal is so appropriate. Senegal was one country in West Africa that did not, um, you know, have any military adventurism. It preserved its democracy until this current president came and began to assault the um, the constitutional processes. But the, the Senegalese young ones, yeah, the young ones of Senegal, they simply put their feet down and said it will not happen. Our constitution is the constitution that embodies our values, our vision,
and our institutions and systems of governance. One individual cannot put it to ruin. You know, I sometimes worry about the part of Christian interpretation of role in nation building that simply says, no matter what you see to be wrong, just keep quiet. I don't understand that one, no. Because I know that, you know, we shouldn't. Even God said to the children of Israel, I, I, just that I don't remember the, the passage in Deuteronomy, he said, please don't allow the king to do so and so that is contrary. In other words, if the king goes worshiping idol, you, all of you follow the king to go and worship idol, it shouldn't be. So we cannot possibly not call out the kind of thing that I call, but you know, it was my husband that corrected me. I would say these leaders that are governing badly, and he said, no, they are not leaders, they are rulers. So, because the ruler cares about unto himself, the leader cares about unto the common good. It's a major difference. So, for us, when we look at places like Senegal, there is an example there. Well, frankly speaking, the reason we compare Nigeria with some of these countries outside of our continent is because if I read another thing in my note for you, it's a book that is called This House Has Fallen. And this British author said in the book that at the time of independence, the world put a bet on Nigeria that it was going to set the standard. Can you imagine? That it would set the standard. It's not yet over until it is over. That's why, for me, I just kind of feel that the more knowledge we have, the more analytical understanding of what nation building is about, because the, before, the church just simply stayed in the church. Not anymore. Look at what we do in the Redeemed Christian Church of God with uh, Christian social responsibility. It's incredible. Look at the going to the nations that we do. Because I mean, I, sometimes when I go to nations, somebody will say to me, are you mommy Adeboye's <laughs> daughter? And I will say yes. Oh, she came for Feast of Esther. And the message was really good. What do you think we're doing? We're spreading. We're spreading into governance. That's what we're doing. We should not lose sight of that. We should encourage more people, as our pastor said, to embrace politics. The truth is, God cares about politics. The governance of the earth exists on the basis of politics. Even though God would have wanted to directly rule us, but when the Israelis themselves said, give us a king, political system started. Now that political system has now translated into what we call democracy. Since we now have democracy, what we must do is understand democracy so that we can govern and participate in democracy as children of God. To that effect, therefore, don't look down on politics. The truth is, one Christian who goes into office and really is a standard bearer for the values that are biblical is more than a thousand people who do the wrong things. God bless you all. system that's true oh my pet my pet issue so I uh, I you know it's uh, it's a hard one when I became Minister of Education I had been Minister of Solid Minerals and um, I, I took a scientific approach I'm evidence-based in looking at problems so we had to do a very strong analysis of what it takes to have a global standard mineral sector in any country. And when we understood what it took, 
I now said, let's look at what we have. By the time we compared what we had and what we should have in order to be a destination that would attract global capital, the difference was like the rest of the world was going to the North Pole and we were going to the South Pole with speed. In order to correct it, we then had to do the things like building blocks that would correct the sector. When we did that, dear mommy, 107 reform measures were necessary to be done. 107. Because President Obasanjo put so much pressure on me and said, in six months, I want you to reform everything. He didn't do that to others, but he did it to me. We then started working. By the time he was taking me out of solid minerals, we had already done 97 of those reform measures. Very tough things, like geological survey of the entire country, like building the mining cadastral system, you know, so many important measures. When I got to education, I did a similar thing. You will understand why I'm telling this, the, the earlier story. We needed to do 406 reform measures in order to get the education sector working. And Baba had sent me to education 10, minutes before the, uh, 10 months before the end of the administration. But we still put our effort into it. Brethren, at the time I resigned from government to head to Washington, D.C., we had done about 45 or either done or started implementing some 45 percent of the 400 and something reform measures. When the successor came in a new administration, he was asked, what is your vision for education? His answer was to reform Ezekwesili's reforms. This is important because it ties back again to what we just said about politics. We don't only want people who enter into government and work as technocrats like I did. We need people who go into politics because politics ruined the reforms in education. And who did that affect? the children of the poor because the reforms were designed to take Nigeria. I was using Singapore as my country benchmark for where our education system needed to be. Some of the reforms that we did in education during my time, countries in Europe adopted them at the time I went to the World Bank. But in my own country, a successor said his business was to reform those reforms. The Lord will have mercy. Let's clap our hands for our wonderful guest lecturer, a daughter of Zion, a pride to the world. Amen. At this point, we would like to hear from our mother, a mother indeed, a true mother, always there for us. I'd like to invite Pastor Carr for Basar, please, come and properly, properly, properly invite our mommy. Let's clap our hands. Mommy, please, the microphone is coming to you there, man. Please, shall we be on our feet? Let's celebrate this wonderful woman. Lord, as I come into your presence Amen. today. Before mommy reaches the platform, may I say to all of us that mommy has been playing significant roles since this lecture began 10 years ago. Mommy has been so fantastic. We have been receiving 
beautiful support from our mommy, our beloved mommy has been so wonderful. Can we put our hands together for mommy Jill? Mommy, you are grateful, man. Lord, I thank you so much to your presence for all the support today. you have been receiving on this lecture. There's thank you, man. Special in my for you. Thank you, man. Seated. This is the day the Lord has made. Whatever may be happening, since we are in the presence of God, it is mandatory that we rejoice. So let everybody in the house shout hallelujah. I want to give glory to the Almighty God for this great privilege to be here today even at a late time because I cannot serve two masters. I only struggle to be here and I believe the elders, the triumphant elders and the organizers and our lecturers will pardon me for coming late. I sincerely want to say thank you as I have come to represent the Adeboye's family to thank God, the God who preserved this man we are celebrating we want to say a big thank you to the God of Adeboye. Who has planned it right from his mother's womb that he shall be celebrated in his life, in his lifetime. I want to say a big thank you to the triumphant elders, the planning committee for, who had been doing it for the past 10 years to organize this lecture in honor of the general overseer of RCCG, Pastor Ye Adeboye. The Lord himself will celebrate all of you. He will beautify your lives and in your own time you will see greater things happening around you and all the desires of your hearts God will grant you in Jesus mighty name I also want to say thank you to our guest speaker of today the only Dr. Mrs. Um, Abby Ezekiesley only all other ones are fake. And um, we want to thank the husband. Uh, we have something we normally, Abby has a name in our household. And uh, if I ever hear you calling her, you will be in trouble. So that name is Obisco. <laughs> and um, you can see her bubbling and basking in the glory of the almighty God God will keep you going you will never fail and the trust God has in you 
to put you where you are ever you are showing your face to be his ambassador that trust will never be ruined your mind will be the mind of Christ till the end of the day and you fulfill your days in Jesus name we want to say thank you to Pastor Ezekiel Sely for praying for her and supporting her all the time. The Lord will support you and your home will continually be a glorious home in Jesus' name. Like I said, even as I have come to represent the Adeboye's family, I want to thank all the elders in the house Either you are in the committee of the triumphant elders who are always preparing for the annual um, lecture or not. All our elders in the house will salute you. The Lord will keep you to the end of the day. And for all our young ones in the house, people who are my colleagues, anybody who is below 75 you are my colleagues we are the young ones following the elders god himself will help us to rise to the position of elders and we shall be brighter we shall shine be shine more and we shall achieve more in jesus name um thank god for the panel discussion of the lecture topic professor dele balogun and um, professor adebileje thank you so much for the light you have thrown into what our lecturer has said i did not i was not here to listen fully to what the lecturer said but i believe the holy spirit through all that everybody has been saying as comments is um has been able to build up the lecture into my heart but as a mother and a pastor in rccg the wife of the general overseer of this mission I have my own little contribution towards this lecture. Rebuilding. Rebuilding, renew, and restoring. Everything starts with re, re, re. Which means, like the lecturer has said, there was something before. If there had not been a structure before, you can't rebuild. This is very essential. And I'm taking you to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1. The book of Nehemiah. In the book of Nehemiah, the Bible let us know, she referred to it herself also, that she was the governor who took a stand at a time in Israel. The Bible tells us that a news was brought to Nehemiah in Nehemiah chapter 1 that the wall of Jerusalem is broken. And not only the walls, even the gates, where there were no walls, what will the gates be doing? Already everything will be exposed. No wall, no gates. And when we read that book of Nehemiah, what did the Bible say? Nehemiah was concerned. He was in deep sorrow. In Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 3, the wall broken down, the gate was burnt with fire. And in verse 4, there was a concern. I believe what we have heard today should bring a concern to our hearts and this concern should affect everything we do either spiritually socially 
emotionally and even in whatever we call our daily bread we should have the concern that was what Nehemiah had and the Bible tells us that not only that one he prayed he wept he mourned after we have left here today what is the next step we want to take do we want to take this lecture as just the normal lecture that nothing will happen after we have left only news was brought to Nehemiah and he was concerned he wept he mourned how many of us had been concerned about the situation in our nation even if we have been concerned does it show in our daily living or we are still doing what we are doing the same way we are doing it how many of us have thought about the rebuilding the wall I read a book about almost 20 something years ago uh, from one of a renowned evangelist and preacher in America I think it's Jerry Savelle and he said he used the book of Nehemiah said, rebuilding the real you rebuilding the real you before we can go ahead to rebuild this nation we need to rebuild ourselves this is very important thank God Mrs. Uh, Professor Adebile just started that we should build our homes which is the primary assignment and the most essential assignment to all of us. Where are we? Walls of our homes and the gates to our homes had gone out. They are broken and the enemy has set fire into it. What are we doing to rebuild? Thank God for the people God has used to bring up this lecture. And I have another, uh, another example to give us. That is Esther. She had also, thank God for good Mordecais. I think the Mordecais today are the triumphant elders to us. They have come out to be the Mordecai of our time. <laughs> to show us what we should do. We are hearing it, we are saying it, we, the news is carrying all kinds of things every day. Are we pleased? The Mordecais are now crying and saying, Don't think you yourself and your family will survive it. If you don't remind yourself, you are living for a time like this. We are all living for a time like this. None of us is exempted. For us to be alive at this period in this nation, probably if God did not want us to see what we are seeing now, we could have died some years back. But for the fact that we are living now and we are alive, it is to declare the purpose of God for our lives, for our nations, Nigeria in particular. What is our contribution? In rebuilding the lecturer said you can't restore you can't do anything without rebuilding the first thing is to put up the dilapidated area and now begin to mold block thank God for the young ones in the house <laughs> hallelujah this is not the time for you to be yelling and be clapping and be clapping the message was sent to Esther. Esther chapter 4. When Mordecai reminded her, maybe you are in the kingdom for a time like this. Ah. <laughs> she, she, she stood firm. She made up her mind to use everything she could use. She said, if I perish, I perish. So it, she sent back to Mordecai, I will do what you ask me to do. If I perish, I perish. It's a task.
for all of us who are young in the house to arise now it is not by the placard we will carry that's not what we are saying in every group in every university in every gathering we have we should show a sign of rebuilding our slang now should be we must rebuild this is our nation we can't run away from nigeria even if you run away you are still carrying the, the green passports very soon those people you are running to you knew what nigeria did sometimes they, they, they chase out some one nation out of nigeria it may happen to you wherever you want to run to. why don't you be like Esther? commitments selflessness you know doing everything we can do now to be in the truth wherever we are either in our universities display everything that is of god the righteousness of god that the bible says that we make our nation to be higher in everything we want it to be when there is righteousness in the nation there will be power, there will be glory, there will be everything good. And we are the ones, the triumphant tell us they have done their work. Oh. The Mordecai has, they have done their work. They are leaving us to it. What are we going to do is the next thing, the next question. I, I believe everybody in the house today will have some notes or points you yourself right from your homes to your places of work to your schools to your colleges and universities to say where is my position in this rebuilding am i going to be nehemiah am i going to be esther okay when you have chosen out of the two where am I starting? We just need to start. And it must be a radical one. Obi is telling us about why she was the, made the minister of, um, uh, what is this, minerals and um, in, uh, education. Why she became the, uh, the minister of education, I had to talk to her. We discussed. Everything was like, ha. Ah, this thing has been so bad. But we have to start from somewhere. We cannot be telling the story all the time. Making the news. Let us start. Tell your neighbor, start from somewhere. Re start rebuilding this nation. This is my own conclusion of the lecture this morning. Just to add to this. If I have, <laughs> hallelujah, I was among some youth sometimes talking to them, and one of them said, Mom Gio, what do you want? I said, I don't want anything. Just pray for me that my years will be 30 years less than what I am now. Because my heart burns so many things if I am 30 years old now, <laughs> but not 30 years old, I pray God will help me. I think you need to pray for yourself too. God help me to rebuild this nation. This is what we need to go and be amplifying now. Let everybody around us, and this is where you go to today. Wherever you they ask, oh, were you there? Did you hear what say you had? But I'm telling you, go and rebuild this nation. Every one of us, we must start from somewhere. And I believe the God of heaven, who helped Nehemiah and helped Esther, will help all of us. To those of you who are in the government, like Dr. Hobby said, that ah, 
Don't let just leave me. Let me do my little part and go. Hey, your thumbprint is already there. Wherever you are in the government, and you are still doing the Lidamia kind of work. In sincerity with the God of heaven who made you and put you where you are. You didn't put yourself there. You don't think it's because of your education or because of the party or the uncle you know or this and that. No. It is because God wanted you there and you are there. You don't play your role. Having heard all we have heard this morning, hey, I pray the, the blood of Nigerians will not be on your neck. Brethren, are we ready to go and start rebuilding? Are we ready to go and start rebuilding? I rest my case. God in heaven, we hear our cry. And whatever we need to do, there will be a green light. Every one of us, God will show us where we need to work hard. Everyone must play a role. Start with something. And he will hear. If the general overseer is here, I believe he would like to pray for you. So, I am connecting my stories with his own. And I will say we should rise up. Let's rise up. Arise, shine, for our light is come. Arise, shine, for our light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen. The glory of the Lord is come. Upon the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. One more time, arise, shine, for the light is gone. Arise, shine, for the light is gone. The glory of the Lord is risen. The glory, the glory of the Lord is come. The glory, the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. <laughs> I want us as individuals to take that glory by faith. Because it is written in the Bible, arise, shine. The glory of God is risen upon us. Just thank God that, Father, at a time like this, I have your glory upon my life. I receive it. Let that glory descend on me permanently. Because glory is the opposite of shame. Begin to pray now. I want that glory to rest upon my life. Permanently. Anything that is shameful, anything that is not of God, I don't want it again in my life. Let your glory, let your glory sit on my life completely forever. I want to shine for you. Let our glory. I need that glory. I want to say thank you for that glory because it's already risen. And I'm not going to reject this. Whatever it is that is in my life, now I receive that glory. I receive the glory. The glory of God that is risen upon me. Oh, Jehovah, I receive that glory. And I thank you for this. You don't make any mistake for writing that the book of Isaiah for my purpose. It is for me. And it's for a time like this. To remind me that I should arise, I say thank you. And the second prayer point is God. 
I must shine. Let's glory. Let that glory help me to shine. My light must not grow dim. That light must not be hidden. It must not be wasted. You made me in your image and in your likeness. And you have already made your proclamation upon my life that I am the light of the world. Jehovah, I must shine. Whatever has not allowed me to shine before, if it is the devil who wants to cover my glory, today I rebuke it, I reject it. Whatever it is in my life, any character, any habits, Oh, Jehovah Ramakoshiya, Lord Almighty, today I reject them. No matter how old I am, I want to shine. I must shine. I must shine for you. Your glory is risen upon me. Oh, it is mandatory for me to shine. I must shine. I must shine. I'm not going to be hidden. The power and your glory forever and ever is what you said. When you were teaching the disciples how to pray, thy power and thy glory forever and ever. This glory and the power, I must continue in it as it's upon me today and I must walk with it. I don't want to be hidden again. Give me the courage. Give me the boldness. Help me, Lord. Open my eyes of understanding to see where I have to shine, where I have to rebuild. Oh, Lord Almighty. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. All of us together again, let's pray for the lecturer of today that as she's basking and bouncing all over the world that the God of heaven who she doesn't deny and will never deny back her up anywhere she goes that the truth must be said and our words will not fall on the ground that the heavens will use our world to rebuild and to restore nations anywhere she goes that our home, our home will not break down. Our children will not break down. They will live to the, for, the, for the glory of the Almighty God. Let's pray for her. She's a vessel in the hand of God. There are many vessels in the house of God. But she's an exemplary one. The one that even the other ladies should continue to emulate. Other, other children must continue to emulate. Bless us, God, to keep her going in this, in her, in this glory. Masokele makoshira masanto lori ki amokuri kakale mekashi ure mo sentele maye kala mokoshikaya. Thank you. Let's begin to pray for all the triumphant elders. And the planning committee of this annual lecture that even as they are, they are our Mordecai today the God who decorated Mordecai will decorate them and they will move from one degree of glory to another let's pray for them Opori makoshia, oh jekele mo re mo sintele makuri kake makoshi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We thank you, Daddy. We give you praise. We honor you for whom you are in our lives. Can never thank you enough. You have been too much for us. We thank you for ROCCG. Thank you because you are the God of ROCCG. Thank you for a time like this. 
Thank you for the triumphant elders and the committees that had put the annual lectures together for the te last 10 years. Thank you for supporting them. Thank you for all the past lecturers. Thank you for our lecturer of today. Thank you, Father Lord, for that grace, the overwhelming one that is in her, whereby she will speak as your orator and your, the extend, your extended arm. We are touched by all she has already displayed and said today. We are so grateful for her life. And we say, Lord, every prayer we have prayed for her, you will answer her. Oh, she will keep on being relevant. And in her own time, she will live to see the good of this nation. And wherever she goes, she will be a worthy ambassador for you in the name of Jesus. Keep her husband. Keep her home. And let it be well with them. We pray, Father Lord, for everyone that is in the house today. Nobody is exempted in the work of rebuilding. Every one of us, we are relevant. For us to be here and, and to know and to see what we have seen today. Habakkuk said, I will keep my watch and see. He didn't say I will see, I will say I will hear what we say. We are here on the watch. We have heard. What is the next thing for us to do? We want that emotion, that passion. To be, most, to be stronger than before for this nation. That we are wherever we see this nation falling again, we will quickly run to it. That Nigeria, you are not going to fall. You are not going to fall again. Your gates will no longer be set by fire. Oh, every one of us from now on, our hands shall be on the deck for Nigeria to rebuild and to restore every glory of the past. Father, because you only need us to say we are willing. You say those who are willing and obedient, they will eat the good of the land. We ask, Lord, that spirit of willingness, obedience to your word, commitment, passion, will come upon us. We are wherever we are in our homes, at school, universities, colleges, everywhere, either as a government worker or even a pastor in the church, from now on, that word rebuild, let it be chasing us about. So that our utterance will not be <laughs> to pull down, but to rebuild. Help us. Let our slang from now on be to rebuild. Yeah. To rebuild. Yeah. To rebuild. Yeah. To rebuild. Yeah. And so shall it be. Yeah. All our young ones, let them have a new mindset. Yeah. The mind of Christ, let it be in them. Yeah. Not carrying placard of ah, Jehovah Makasi. Please, Lord, rebuild them yourself so that they can rebuild this nation. We also pray, Father, for everyone that has contributed to make this lecture happen and today to be a glorious one. Father, we pray that their lives will never be empty. You will replenish them, replenish their posts. And we pray that we uphold RCCG. And our CCG, as a pace setter in this nation, we pray that there will be no declining <laughs> from your word, from the truth, that we shall stand firm. And everyone who would like to spoil anything that is, is of yours in our CCG, we pray that wind you say is going to blow this year, we blow. Across every parish in RCCG. Yeah. And you will make the substance to stand firm. 
all the shadows shall be blown away. In the mighty name of Jesus. We therefore pray for the general overseer, our Lord. You are honoring him because for this lecture this morning. We say his life will continually be in your honor. Everything that is shameful will not be his portion. You have placed him high. Please support him by your pillar. Help him. Make him stronger and stronger. Let him fulfill his days. And let him finish well. As well as all the elders and even the young ones here at the house. All of us, let us finish well. Thank you for everything. If you tarry by this time next year, oh, let us have a greater house. A glorious house. With testimonies. Of we are we did, we have already built Nigeria too. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever new. Let's keep clapping. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Let's keep clapping our hands for Jesus. Change my heart, oh God. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true, Lord. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. May I be like you. Mommy spoke to us as a pastor and as a mother. The Lord will keep you for us, man. He will renew your strength every day. For 10 years, she has been a pillar for this lecture. You will never diminish, man. Well, I like to ask humbly that our chairman for today, the National Overseer, Pastor Sunday Edward Akande will please step forward to give us his remarks before we close. Let's clap our hands. Let's celebrate the goodness of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I don't know where my mother has spoken. I don't know why I'm called upon again to come and speak. But I want to stand on the existing protocol. And I want to appreciate our great mother for our motherly care and our motherly love. And the word mommy has shared with us this afternoon to crown all the lectures that we have had here today. I appreciate our lecturer for today. Though I came late, but what I met, uh, I believe our dear pastor, Pastor Obi, is fully loaded. And God will continue to strengthen you, ma. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank God for uh, they are pastor, pastor of our mommy, mommy Obi. God will continue to strengthen you in the mighty name of Jesus. And for our two professors, they've done wonderfully well. They've done wonderfully well. Uh, to expatiate on what we have had, what a great day. 
And I pray that this will not just be an academic exercise. It will be a time for us to, to look up. Because when we are talking about building a nation, we are the nation. And the church has a big role to play if what we have had today will ever come to pass. Let us start just as mommy has spoken. Let us start with ourselves. And let us start with the church. Gonna do this that people sent to this church to come and recruit I hope techno uh, technocrats. But today, what is happening to us? Let us start with that. Are we in the foundation that was laid for us as a church? Because you cannot build a nation without starting with ourselves. And uh, Abraham asked the Lord when the, the angel of God came to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, suppose you have 10, will you still destroy the city? He said, if you have 10. Today we are celebrating our Father in the Lord. If we can have 50 of that Jew in Nigeria today, in the redeemed Christian Church of God, this nation will be built up in sacrifice, in faithfulness, in commitment. I believe Nigeria will be built up. But can we have it? Are we in the foundation that was laid for us by the fathers of this mission? Are we following, not just by name, bearing Pastor Deboe's son and daughter, but are we following the footstep of Pastor Deboe? Because there can never be building of a nation without a leader. And we have a leader. Are we following that leader? Because I believe if few of us will follow the footstep of our daddy, Nigeria will be built up. There is no doubt about that. But are we following it? Look at what is happening to us today. Tribalism are taking over the redeemed Christian Church of God. We need to do something about it. In the, past, in the time past, I can easily travel to the east or south or not, and nobody will ask me. They only know me as a pastor of Redeemed Christian Church of God. But now, even in our midst, that because we cannot be talking of a nation, we are the nation. We need to start within ourselves and to when people begin to see that example, you will see the nation will be built. That's just my few comments because I cannot be talking where my mother has spoken. <laughs> and my mother has spoken well. So <laughs> I, I want to just stand on my mother's speech today and encourage all of us to go back and begin to do what is right as a ministers of God in our different location, in our different little, little section that we are. As a national overseer, I have seen a lot that and we need to pray that we need to rebuild even starting from the church and God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus with this we comment I like to I know there are some of us who have heard the word today right from our chief lecturer to all the uh, professors that have spoken and I believe God is talking to you that you need to go back to God to say Lord I am part of those who are not really doing what I supposed to do in rebuilding this nation, in restoring this nation, in renewing this nation. But Lord, I've heard your word. I want to come back to you. I want to enter into covenant with you. That as from now, in my own little way, there will be a change. In my own little way, I begin to do that is expected of me like Nehemiah yes as we have been told like all others that we have read in the Bible you want to make a covenant with God you want to come to the Lord to say yes Lord help me I'll be part of those that will rebuild in Nigeria I will be one of those that will restore the glory of Nigeria. Shall we all please rise? Maybe you are there. 
you want to step forward you want to say yes lord help me i am going to your altar as a covenant with you that i will be part of those that will restore the glory of this nation i will be part of those we don't know where god is taking you to but i believe with what we have had today the light is shining into your heart right now the light is shining into your path right now most especially especially even our youth what's your own part in this rebuilding you too can walk into the altar and say lord help me i am coming before your altar to enter into covenant with you that i will be part of those that will rebuild this nation whatever opportunity given to me i will make the best use of it i will not abuse it i will be part of those that will restore back the glory of nigeria if you are there and you want to be part and you want to enter into that covenant with god i want you to just take a step of faith and come to the altar and come and renew that covenant with god this is not just an academic exercise this is a real lecture a practical lecture a practical lecture that we need to go to begin to practicalize not just talking no we are not just here to talk we are here to begin to see changes to see nigeria being rebuilt to see nigeria renew to see nigeria restore if you want to be part of those restoration you want to be part of that rebuilding you want to be part of that renew come before the lord and come and pray come and enter into covenant with him if there's anyone please open your eyes and come and stand on this altar of god and let us enter together into covenant with god that things will begin to take a new turn as from today if you are there please just come forward come forward come forward quickly before we pray before we pray come forward quickly yeah there's none that mommy have prayed for us and i know god have answered the prayer oh we can see one coming okay please please come please come let me give you one more one more opportunity one more opportunity if you are still there you want to come please come please come please come please come this is a renewal time this is a renewal time come just come just come don't allow anybody to, to stop you just come forward come forward you are entering into covenant with the king of kings with the lord of lords not with man we have heard the word here today we've heard that powerful message powerful message it's not just from our mommy or pastor that spoke it's from the throne of grace it's from the throne of grace with all the comments you have heard with all the comments you have heard come 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 if you are there you want to join please join them quickly join them quickly join them quickly join them quickly this is the hour to renew that covenant with the lord oh you are taking a bold step before the king of kings before the lord of law and i can assure you the almighty god is watching and i can see grace coming upon your life as you are taking that step i see the grace of god coming upon your life right now i see the grace coming i see the grace coming in the name of jesus i see the grace coming in the name of jesus yes lord because this is not just a salvation call this is a renewal call i would like please where mommy is seated to please release grace upon these ones that please i want mommy because that prayer is more than me i want mommy to release grace upon these ones Make it ever Yeah. I said okay because I've been given this grace I know the anointing will come upon my life father in heaven I want to bless your name I thank you Lord for all this your children I thank you Lord for the word you have sent to us today and I thank you Lord for these ones who are entering into covenant with you that by your special grace and mercy we want to be part of the renewal restoration and the rebuilding of this our nation nigeria 
father i ask oh god that your grace will come upon this once in the name of jesus okay. i pray my father my god that you will uphold them you will strengthen them you will shine your light upon their lives and grace to stand in faithfulness grace to stand in holiness grace to stand oh god in sacrifice release upon their lives in the name of jesus your heart our father in the lord and today we can be proud of our father my lord and my father jehovah El Shaddai, i pray that you will uphold this one that very soon this nation shall be proud of them in the name of jesus you will not fall the almighty god will help you he will strengthen you in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus name we pray praise the lord god bless you god bless you god bless you please look look towards my right yes follow that our mother I would like to give you one or two more cancer god bless you so i want to appreciate Change our father in the lord the leader of the triumphant elder daddy i appreciate god in your life god will keep you and strengthen you and all the team the almighty god will strengthen you all in the name of jesus i pray if the lord tarries next year will be wonderful bigger better than this in the name of jesus and for all of us here today on behalf of my father in the lord i say god bless you all let's give the lord a round of applause at this point i'd like to invite a member of the planning committee for this lecture pastor mrs shola balogun to please do the vote of thanks and the closing prayer pastor mrs shola balogun please let's clap the lord our hands for the Lord Jesus. On to Jesus. Then please all members of the planning committee should wait after this program. All members of the planning committee, please, we need to meet in front here immediately after the closing prayer praise the lord hallelujah on behalf of the convener of this um, program we'd like to say a very big thank you to each one of us first of all we'd like to thank the almighty god for making today possible the lord planned today he made it possible for each one of us to be here. We were not recalled suddenly to come back home. And we appreciate this. We say a big thank you to the Almighty God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also thank the Lord for our Father and the Lord whose birthday we're celebrating. We thank the Lord for keeping him alive, strong, making, me, making him a voice all over the world a man of influence and we also thank even our father for always wanting us saying all the time that we shall be greater than him we pray that the lord will bless him even more keep him in good health make his days days of joy without any kind of sorrow in the name of the lord jesus christ we appreciate mommy Gio who has just left She's always had time every year to be very relevant. Each time we sell food, the takeaway is always be Mommy Jill, no matter wherever she is. And we say thank you to Mommy. The Lord will keep on keeping her strong in Jesus' mighty name. We say thank you to the National Overseer and all our mommies and all our daddies who have been here and who are still here some have left we appreciate your coming without you to not have been the same thank you very much and god bless you indeed in jesus name 
For those of us who have been part of this program online, we do appreciate you. And the Lord will make you relevant and also honor you as you have honored our Father in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. None of us here is small. Without you, it would have been an empty hall. That you are here has brought so much joy and so much encouragement to each one of us. The Lord will always keep you relevant in the affairs of his kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank in particular the guest speaker, Pastor Obi, and the awesome husband. Thank you very much again and again and again and again in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that as we go, if Jesus tarries, by this time next year, it shall be bigger, greater, and more impactful in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, we just want to appreciate God for the souls that came to the kingdom today. Let's clap for the Lord. God made sure that today is the day for those souls. What a mighty God. And it's a sign that today was not wasted. It's a day that the Lord has made and we shall keep on rejoicing in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that as each one of you go home, you'll meet your families well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This year, no more sorrow in the name of Jesus. No pain, no shame, no reproach, no disgrace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray also that because you have been part of this program, God will give you a gift that is unexpected. A good gift. He will celebrate our Father and the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord increase you on all sides. Make his face to shine upon you. And on all sides, the Lord give you peace. And as you leave, you leave all your problems here. You go home with joy and solution. Again and again, thank you very much. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.